truly it's a blessing to be here tonight. God is good. Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercies endure it forever. Well, we thank the Lord tonight. Amen. Good God. God is good. I say God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. What a wonderful thing to me in the house of the Lord tonight. Thank God for life. Glory to God. I say thank God for life. Amen. I want everyone tonight just to give the Lord a praise for his goodness. Give the Lord a praise for his kindness. Give the Lord a praise for his love. Isaiah, Jeremiah said it's the Lord's mercies while we are not consumed. Neither his compassion fail it not. They are new every morning and great is thy faithfulness. God bless you tonight. Praise God. We thank God for all the pastors, all the saints of God everywhere. Amen. That come to hear the word of God and power Tuesday. Glory to God. God is a good God. Amen. I'm excited about Jesus tonight. Amen. I thank God for his grace. I thank God for his love, his kindness. Thank God for his strength. Amen. Truly, it's a wonderful thing. Amen. Just to be in the land of the living. Grace and peace be unto you, Minister Joy Marshall, up there in Limage, in Jamaica. I heard that Jamaica is experiencing tremendous amount of rain. Praise God because of the storm or the hurricane. Amen. That threatened the island. So we're praying for them tonight. Praise God in Jesus' name. We're praying for Haiti. Haiti has just escaped, a man has just experienced a earthquake, a man, and now they are experiencing tropical storm or hurricane. So we got to pray for them that God will preserve them. God will keep his people. He is a faithful God. All right, so we thank God for missionary arm minister, uh, missionary Martina Armstrong. God bless you, Vandalis Susie Smith. Amen. We thank God for you. Greet that for me, Bishop. Amen. I'm just so grateful for the man of God. Missionary Martha Palmer, grace and peace be unto you. Missionary Diane Brainhand out of Nassau, Bahamas. Missionary Avril Lewis Smith, grace and peace be unto you tonight from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Helena Stewart, we thank God for you. Evangelist Sheila Pettiford out of the Carolina. Amen. Blessings evermore, woman of God. Missionary Dolores Ennis McCoy. Grace and peace be unto you. Oh, my God. Missionary Virginia Roll out of Nassau. God bless you, daughter. Grace and peace be unto you tonight. Amen. We thank God for you in Jesus' name. All the saints of God that's coming in tonight, we want to bless you in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for Pastor Dorothy Campbell. Amen. Down there in Myanmar. Amen. Florida. God bless you, woman of God. And Elder Campbell, grace and peace be unto you. Vandalist Donis. Amen. Denial Gilvey. And Brother Mark. God bless you. Amen. Evangelist Heat. Amen. Uh, missionary Myrna. Amen. <laughs> Lord have mercy. We just want to call out all the names. But God bless everyone down there in Jesus in Florida. And in Nassau, Bahamas, grace and peace be unto you, Pastor Monica Paul. Amen. We thank God for you, woman of God. We pray in your strength in the Lord. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Wong. Amen. We thank God for you tonight. Amen. We pray for you and your family. Glory to God. God is good. Amen. And Pastor Owen Gale and Bishop Bentley down there in Jamaica. Amen. We pray for you down there in Jamaica that experiencing Amen. This rain. My God, I heard there's so much rain down there. Amen. But we pray that God will preserve his people and that God will keep you. We thank the Lord tonight for my wife, Evangelist Beverly Smith. Amen. Send greetings in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Also, Evangelist Priscilla Smith Campbell. Amen. Who and Dana is in the house. Amen. Our technician tonight. Amen, which Priscilla, Evangelist Priscilla Smith is the assistant technician tonight. Amen. So you just, amen, pray for them. God bless you, Evangelist Barbara Morgan. Grace and peace be unto you. Lana Rose, grace and peace be unto you. From God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. 
We celebrate our bishop tonight, Bishop Barney Brown. Amen. We greet the man of God and his wife, Lady Gail Brown. Grace and peace in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please be reminded of a convention coming up at the ending of the month. We expect to have great times Sunday morning right here in the sanctuary. And then on Tuesday night, amen, Sunday night, Zoom. Skip Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We'll be on Zoom on Sunday morning back in the sanctuary. But don't you forget, on Saturday morning with morning glory from 6 to 8 o'clock, amen, in the morning. But as the time advances, we'll give you more announcement, amen, concerning our upcoming events. Praise God. God is good. So we thank God tonight. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you, God, for your grace. We thank you for your strength. We thank you for your power. We thank you, God, because it is you who had made us and not we ourselves. We thank you, Lord God, because the blessings of the Lord makes rich and you add no sorrow to it. We thank you, God, for sparing our lives to see a day we have never seen before. We thank you, God, because it is you who had made us and not we ourselves. Bless our hearts tonight, Father, everyone that is on to hear your word. Pray, God, that you will bless their hearts, O oh God, and give them clarity of thoughts and mind. O oh God, that open their spirit to capture the revelatory word, that they may grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you praise tonight and we bless and honor you because you're the great God. You're the great I am God. And we thank you for the blessings of the Lord tonight that makes rich and you add no sorrow to it. Have your way tonight, God, and glorify yourself in Jesus' name. Let everyone say amen. All right, God bless you again, Millicent Hewitt. Grace and peace be unto you, Evangelist Karin Don. God bless you in Jesus' name, Rosemary Campbell. We thank God for you tonight in Jesus' name. All right, let us just worship the Lord a little bit. Come on, clap your hands and give the Lord a praise right now while we worship the Lord right now. It's good to set the stage. Come on, it's good to set the stage. Just clap your hands. And let's worship the Lord. You know my name. Woo! You know my name. Glory to God. How many glad he know your name? I told you he called you by your name and not by your shame. Oh, how you talk with me. Oh, how you talk with me. Good God. I hear you. Say, oh, how you tell me. No, oh, how you tell me. Oh, you tell me, Lord. I am your God bless your purpose, dream of survival. You know my name. Mr. Shana, you God bless you. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. And you call me friend. You know my name. You know my name, oh, my name yeah. is Terra. Oh, how you walk with me. How you walk with me. Oh, how you walk with me. Oh, where to go. Has he been walking with you? And oh, how you talk with me. Oh, how you walk with me. Oh, where to go. Oh, how you tell Woo! me. And oh, how you tell me. Come on, say it.
God, how many glad he know your name tonight? He not only know your name, but he know your voice. Because your voice sets a distinct sound in heaven. Amen? He knows your voice. That's when you call. It doesn't matter who call with you the same time. He can distinct whose voice it is. And that is the omnip omnipotence of God and the omniscience of God. Amen, because he know everything that goes on at the same time. Grace and peace be unto you tonight. Amen, but you know on Thursday night, amen, is the night when we come and we teach the word of God. Amen, we usually just teach God's word and then we, amen, pray for you and we go home. Friday night is the night when we do our deliverance. Amen, and then we have church and then we pray for you as you anoint yourself with oil. And we go home. But tonight I want to edify you. We implement, the, we implement the triple E factor every Tuesday night. To equip you, to edify you, and to empower you. So that you can face the future without the fear of the failures of the past. Amen. It's necessary. It's important that you hear the word of God. Tonight, amen, I'm going to teach tonight from a very familiar chapter. <laughs> My God, this is really familiar. And that is Psalm chapter 23. Amen. I'm going to speak to you concerning the blessings and the benefits of Psalm 23. Amen. I'm going to speak about the blessings and the benefits of Psalm 23. Amen. A life worth living. We're also going to touch on tonight finding meaning and purpose in this time of difficulty. Most of you don't understand that the Psalms, the divisions of the Psalm, it addresses, amen, some difficulties and some things that we have to deal with in this hour. Amen. In uh, Psalm 23, verse 5, he said, He prepared a table. Thou hast prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anointed my head with oil and my cup runneth over. I would like for you to use your pen and draw a line, amen, under that, you know, verse. That's not the verse I'm going to pinpoint because I'm going to take from verse 1 to verse 7, 6 rather, and I'm going to pinpoint and show you the benefits and the blessings, amen, that God has assigned for the believers in Psalm chapter 23. But I want to give you the golden text for the topic tonight. And that is Psalm 23 verse 5. That is the key verse. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And you anoint my head with oil. My cup run it over. Right in that one verse. Amen. You have seen the table. You have seen the table. You have seen the oil. And you have seen God's faithfulness. All right, that one verse, amen, you'll see the table. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. And you anoint my head with oil. Notice that. So you have the table, you have the oil. And he said, my cup run it over. Praise God. He speaks about the faithfulness of God, giving you an overflowing, abundant life. Praise God. So now you draw a line under that. 
Because most time we read the psalm and we just read it because it's the common practice for us to read Psalm 23. But I'm going to extract some nuggets and the blessings and the benefits of this scripture. Amen. This passage of scripture to you tonight. So as soon as you uh, draw a line and the, you prepare a table. So the table, the oil, and God's faithfulness is expressed in one verse. Amen. Because this anointing, the oil that he spoke about, this anointing will empower you to fulfill your divine assignment. He anoint my head with oil. Amen. Type of the anointing. And this anointing will empower you to fulfill your design assignment. Your divine assignment. Because who? Amen. Because when God has put his hand upon you, God has to anoint you with oil. Or anoint you with the oil of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Giving you power or to empower you to fulfill your divine assignment. Praise God. Because becoming who we were created to be is possible only through the grace. Becoming who we were created to be is possible only through the grace, the power, and the anointing of God. Please remember, remember that. Becoming who we were created to be is only possible through the grace of God, the power of God, and the anointing of God. Also, I want to point out to you that our purpose has a heavenly origin. Our purpose has a heavenly origin. And therefore, it is beyond the perception of our natural senses. Amen. Our purpose has a heavenly origin. And because of that, it is beyond the perception of our natural senses. And those of you that follow my teaching, you hear me say that, amen, your mind was not designed to know your future. Your soul and your mind was not designed by God to know your future. It's your spirit that knows your future. And you hear me say this many times, it is your spirit that holds the memories of your future that your mind cannot comprehend. It's your spirit that holds the memories of your future that your mind cannot comprehend. So therefore then, your, mind, your spirit becomes the custodian of your calling. It is your spirit that holds the memories of your future that your mind cannot comprehend. Because your spirit was wired by God. It was coded by God and programmed by God. Amen. To deal with supernatural things. Or to deal with heavenly matters. Amen. So it's your spirit, praise God, that God speaks to you through. Amen. So your spirit is the custodian of your gift, your calling, and your purpose. Glory to God. Amen. So as we're going to go into the word tonight, you've got to understand that God has predetermined and published the benefits he has for the believers. God has predetermined and published the benefits he has for the believers right here in the book of Psalm. And God wants to give you these benefits and more if you trust him. Now I know that most times we read the Psalm, Psalm chapter 23 or the division of Psalm 23. Praise God. And in the psalm, we find meaning and purpose in the time of difficulty. In the time of difficulty, and you read a psalm, you find meaning and purpose. You find comfort and consolation, amen, in the psalm. Because the psalm is a prophetic book in most instant. Amen. Most people don't understand this prophecy in the psalm. And the psalm has prophetic utterance codified in it, amen, so that the believers, when they are going through the test of life and going through the challenges of life, amen, they can read the Psalms when they are feeling sad, cast down, amen, and mourning at a funeral or the loss of a loved one. They can read the Psalm and get comfort from the Psalm 
They can read the psalm and get strength from the psalm. So today we are going to study a very familiar psalm, which I am sure all of us have heard at least one in a lifetime have read Psalm 23. But the problem with this is that most of us probably have heard it preached only during this or a particular occasion. Amen. At a funeral service. In fact, it is favorably, amen, a scripture or a psalm that we read at funeral service. Anytime anybody pass away and you go to a funeral, you expect them to read Psalm 23. Especially when they, uh, they are rolling out the casket through the door. Amen. The, the preacher would get Psalm 23 and he would read, The Lord is my shepherd. So most of us, we are familiar with Psalm 23 because, amen, it mostly used at a funeral. But today I want you to understand that it is, it is, its message is not for dead people. Lord have mercy. The, the, the message of the psalm is not for dead people or people who lost their loved one. There are benefits and blessings in the psalm for the believers and for the people of God. And tonight we want to extract some of those benefits and blessings in Psalm chapter 21, 23 rather. Because Psalm 23 is a celebration of the fact that the Lord is our great companion. Uh, our great shepherd. And David likened him to an earthly shepherd because he knew of no person that best represents the very compassionate and caring the nature of the Lord at that time. Then a faithful and loving shepherd, our Lord Jesus Christ. So David here, amen, I think, is foreshadowing to us the coming of the Lord Jesus who will be our good shepherd. David speaks to the prophetic of God, and David in Psalm 23 is speaking under the influence of the Holy Spirit, amen, foreshadowing to us the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, who will be our good shepherd. In fact, the Lord Jesus himself affirmed, the Lord Jesus himself affirmed this when he told his disciples in John chapter 10, amen, and 10, that he is our good shepherd. Glory to God. Everybody say good shepherd. I didn't hear you. Come on, say good shepherd. Praise the Lord. So David, amen, declare in the word, amen, that the Lord is our shepherd. And Jesus affirms this prophecy, amen, when he told his disciples in John 10 that he is our good shepherd. So in this psalm, David enumerates to us what the Lord, our great shepherd, does or promise to do for his people or those who had placed their trust in him as their savior and as their Lord. Amen. So David here now, this psalm contains many pictures and illustrate to the believers or to us Amen. Jehovah compound names or title of the Lord. Amen. Because you have various compound names that God ascribed to himself. Remember what I told you. Amen. In the Old Testament. Because the Old Testament is the mystery of God concealed. And in the New Testament is the mystery of God revealed. In the Old Testament, God usually creates situations for revelation. Why did he do this is because, amen, the Old Testament saints, they were not filled with the Holy Spirit. They not, did not have the Holy Ghost to lead them and guide them into all truth. So God has to create situations for revelation so that they can understand and comprehend that he is the true God. But in the New Testament, to believers, God does not have to create a situation for to give us revelation as who to know who He is, because He has given us the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost is the source of revelation. 
that outside of the believers being filled with the Holy Spirit, amen, they cannot get the revelation from God because it is the Holy Ghost that takes it from God and reveals it unto our spirit, and then our spirit captures that revelation. So whenever your spirit captures the revelation that the Holy Ghost is given, illumination begins. It illuminates you. Amen. Then elevation begins. You start to grow. You start to develop in the realms of the supernatural. And you start to understand the word of God. It was Paul that said that why this is so important is because the natural man cannot receive the things of God because they are spiritually discerning. So one thing that the believers must give God thanks for, apart from the natural blessings that they receive from God, is that they have the privilege and have the ability to receive things that come out of the eternal realms into the earth realm. And that's why God filled you with the Holy Spirit. Oh God. So therefore, you need the Holy Spirit then to reveal Christ in you. You need the Holy Spirit, amen, to reveal, amen, the mysteries of God into your spirit so that your spirit can transmit these mystery, mysterion, to your mind because your mind, again, was not, amen, wired or coded or programmed to understand the things of God. You've got to remember that man is tripartite. Man have a body, he have a soul, and he have a spirit. But it goes into the reverse after Adam's sin. Amen. Because man was designed by God to operate and function in this sequence. The sequence that you were designed to function in, child of God, is spirit, soul, and body. Because your body is the house that you live in. So you were designed by God to live and function in the sequence of God, which is spirit, soul, and body. When Adam sinned, glory to God, his spirit divorced his soul and his body because of the darkness that flood the man's life. The spirit have to leave the man, glory to God. The spirit now leave his spirit and his spirit now become dead. Ah, so the body now without the spirit, the Bible said it is dead. So Adam became a dead man walking, glory to God. So now he reveals himself through uh, various component names. So this psalm contains many pictures and illustrations of the Jehovah compound names or titles of the Lord. And these names, compound names, it show us and reveal, it show to us and reveal to us the nature and the character of our Lord Jesus Christ. Follow me tonight. Amen. You don't have to write because I'm giving you the update of the psalm. Why is this psalm so powerful that we only read to dead people and over casket? When God have all these benefits and blessings wrapped up in this psalm 23, which we are not appropriating to our lives to live in victory because the preacher only pews it when he's burying the dead. And God did not write this psalm to bury dead. He write this psalm to give you, amen, a revelation of his nature, his character, of who he is to you. Glory to God. So this psalm, amen, Psalm 23, it reads like this. The Lord is my shepherd, my God. So the message is all about a loving God, a loving, compassionate, and caring God who is likened to a shepherd who promised to be our all in all. Glory to God. Can I say that again? It starts off like this. The Lord is my shepherd. I like that. I like what David did there. David did not say the Lord is our shepherd. Because David believed that every man should speak for himself. David believed here every man should know Jesus for himself. It speaks of relationship. You will never know he is your shepherd until you come into relationship with him. Everybody's a relationship. Yes. I, I, I'm glad you said it because relationship is very important to God. Because you cannot receive anything from God, any blessing from God, any insight from God, unless you are in a relationship with God. 
when you're in a relationship with somebody and the relationship is established, amen, you don't hide anything from the person, amen. As a matter of fact, you should not hide anything from the person that you're in relationship with because it calls for an openness. So David right here now, David said, the Lord is my shepherd. David said, let every man speak for himself. The Lord is my shepherd. Praise God. So the message is all about a loving and compassionate and caring God who is likened to a shepherd who promised to be all over all in all. Praise God. That is, he will be. God will be. And he will provide whatever needed, amen, or whatever we needed in life, amen, to, uh, to carry us through life. Amen. In other words, he's our shepherd, amen, he will be and will provide whatever need we will ever have in this life. That's why Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, he said, My God shall supply all our need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Why? Because he is the good shepherd. Now, I want you to write this down now because we are going to look at that list, at the list. We're going to look at the list, amen, uh, uh, of the promises, of the promised blessing. We are going to give you a list of the promised blessings in the book of Psalm chapter 23. And then I'm going to explain each blessings to you in short. I'm going to give you a short synopsis of what does that uh, blessing mean when you write it down. So, because it's for the sake of time, amen, the, the, the first one, the, you're going to write, life of substance. Life of substance. Praise God. Life of su no, sustenance. Life of sustenance. Life of sustenance. S-U-S-T-E-N-A-N-C-E. -E. Amen. Life of sustenance. One of the blessings that come with Psalm 23 is a life of sustenance. Number two, a life of balance. Number two, a life of balance. A balanced life. Number three, a life of resilience. A life of resilience. So you have a life of sustenance. You have a life of balance. And you have a life of resilience. And then number four, you have a life of guidance. A life of guidance. These are the benefits and the blessings that come in Psalm 23. A life of sustenance. A life of balance. A life of resilience. A life of guidance. A life of confidence. A life of confidence. Glory to God. Yes. Let me see the other one. A life of con and a life of assurance. A life of assurance. Thank God for the life of assurance. He's assuring us about something, and we are going to look at that tonight. Also, a life of influence. These are the blessings and the benefits of Psalm 23. A life of assurance, a life of influence. A life of influence. Also, a life of abundance. A life of abundance. Yes. A life of benevolence. A life of benevolence. Kindness. Mercy. A life of benevolence. And last, but not least, Inheritance of the kingdom of heaven. Inheritance of the kingdom of heaven. So right there, we're looking at the promised blessings and gift and benefits that come with Psalm 23. All these is in Psalm 23. These benefits for the child of God to operate, to receive, to appropriate to the life. Life of sustenance. A life of balance, a life of resilience, a life of guidance, a life of confidence, a life of assurance, 
a life of influence, a life of abundance, benevolence, and finally, inheritance of the kingdom of heaven. And remember what I said to you early on, that the psalm contains many pictures and illustrations of Jehovah's compound names or title of the Lord. Now let's look at the life of sustenance. Verse 1. Because God will meet all our need when I worry. Verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord. Our personally. Our God personally. Shepherds our life. The Lord is my shepherd. That simple means there. That the Lord our God. He personally shepherds our life. Thank God for that. He personally, the Lord, is my shepherd. So the Lord, our God, he personally shepherds our lives. And the compound name ascribed to the Lord here as a shepherd is Jehovah Rohi. Jehovah Rohi. Meaning he is our shepherd. And then in same verse 1, he said, I shall not want, or I lack nothing. I'm talking about sustenance. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, Jehovah Rohi. I shall not want. And when he used the word there now, I shall not want, it's ascribed or amen to the compound name Jehovah Jari, our provider. So the, the Lord who is our shepherd, Jehovah Rohi, he is our Jehovah Jari, our provider. And that's why David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my Jehovah Rohi, and he shall supply my need. He is the Lord, my Jehovah Jari. Our provider. So when you look at this verse now, a great affirmation. The Lord is my shepherd. It simply means that every promise in the psalm hangs on the power of this promise. Every promise in the psalm hung, praise God, hangs on the power of this promise. The Lord is my shepherd. All the promises hangs on that. I believe, amen, that God wants us to have the relationship with him to know that he is faithful to us. He's establishing the fact in the relationship that I am dependable. I can be trusted. I can re you can rely on me. You can rely on me because I am your shepherd and I obligate myself to provide for you. He is our provider. David even went on to say that with his experience being, having God his shepherd, he said, I have been young and now I'm old. And not me now. David said that. I have been young and now I'm old. But I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his feet begging for bread. Why? Because he is my shepherd. He is my Jehovah Rocky. He is my Jehovah Jireh. He will supply and he will always supply and provide for his people. So every promise in the psalm hands and the power of this promise. And the psalmist say here, I believe in God. I believe that God cares and I believe that God cares about me. So the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. You've got to understand, saints of God, that sheep are not intelligent animals. Sheep are not intelligent animals at all, at all, at all. They are defenseless and dependent. And they live by faith in the shepherd. Glory to God. They live by faith in the shepherd. And David who wrote, amen, who wrote, or uh, whose life inspired the psalm, is saying that in our 
anxious, nervous world that we are living in today, amen, we cannot live independent of God. We've got to live depending on our good shepherd to take care of us. Praise God. Because he said here now that they that put their trust in him shall never be ashamed. So David is saying the Lord is my shepherd so that we can depend on him for everything that we need. Glory to God. And you've got to understand at the end of his Philippian letter, Paul made a statement that my God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So the promise of Psalm 23 is that God will have everything that we need and God will give you everything that you need. Amen. He never grow tired of you. Praise God. He never goes tired of you. He takes care of you. Number two, life of balance. That's verse two. A life of balance because God will teach us how to relax when we are going through stressful times in our lives. Like the life time now that we are facing with. We are dealing and living in a time, amen, that there is so much crisis, amen, political upheavals, and all kind of problems is going on in the world. If you're not careful, it will cause you to become stressful. But he's writing to us now in Psalm chapter 23 verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He leadeth my soul beside still water. He'll never leave you. Now he reveals to us there that he is Jehovah Shalom. The God who gives peace. Glory to God. The God who gives peace. Why? He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He leadeth my soul. Amen. Beside still water. You've got to understand, child of God, that God comes to give you peace. And the peace of God, the Bible said, it passes away all understanding. Glory to God. And peace is one of God's theme of the Bible. Peace is one of God's themes of the Bible. God does not want us to live in confusion, frustration, amen, uncertainty, and contention. God wants us to have peace. Everybody say peace. Glory to God. My God. He said he'll keep your minds in perfect peace. Whose minds are stayed in thee. Because what? They trust in the shepherd. Because they trust in my word. So peace is one of the great theme of the Bible. And in the 14th chapter of John, Jesus leaves his disciple a lasting legacy. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Glory to God. And even though he gave it to his disciples, it is applicable to the church. It is applicable to the believer. It is applicable to you. God is our peace. He wants you to have peace. He leaves a legacy, a lasting legacy of peace to us. Oh, if I was in a church tonight, I'd tell you to lay your hands on your head and just say, peace. As a matter of fact, I think I might not do that. Lift up your right hand, put it on your head, and say, peace. Because there's so much cluttering going on in your mind. There's so much uncertainty going on into your mind because you've got to remember that an idle mind is the devil's workshop. And the battle is going on into your mind. So I told you the other day, change your thinking and you change your life. Glory to God. For the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he be. And then he wrote in Colossians, he said, if he then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above and set your affection and things which are above. So God wants you to have peace in your mind. God don't want you to lose your mind over situation and circumstances. Peace is one of the greatest themes of the Bible. Peace belongs to the child of God. Let not your heart be troubled, he said. Praise God. Neither let it be afraid. Don't let the things around you and the things going on around you cause you to live in a, in a state of fear and uncertainty. Praise God. Now what is peace? Amen. Peace is the absence of problems and pressure. Woo! God, my God, that's the, that, that's the easiest definition I can give you to peace. Peace really is the absence of problems and pressure. Jesus said, cast your cares upon me because I cares for you. 
Cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. Be anxious for nothing, Paul said in Philippians chapter 4. Be anxious for nothing but in everything with prayer and with supplication. Amen. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto the Lord. So peace is the absence of problems and pressure. You said, Apostle, are living in a world, man. What are you talking about? We all have, amen, problems and pressure. Yes, we do. But don't allow the problem and the pressure to have you. Woo! That's big right there. The problem is when you allow the problem and the pressure to have you, to control you, to have you in bondage where you cannot function. You must be on top of things, man. Come on. You're a child of God. He said, I give you power to train on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Don't allow the pressures of life and the problems of life to have you to the point that you can function in your right mind. You lose in control. You become anxious. You become stressful. You have anxiety. Praise God. You have a breakdown because of problems in life. I told myself this. No, no. You, you have to practice that now because I speak over myself. Two things I do every day. I command my morning. Amen. And I speak over myself. I command my morning and I speak over myself. Once you command your morning, the outcome of your day, amen, is a reflection of what you command in the morning. Glory to God. If you get up and you expect problem and worry over your bills and worry over that and worry over this, that's how your day is going to end in frustration. Glory to God. And that's why prayer is the key that opens the door in the morning and prayer is the key that locks the door at night. Lord, have mercy tonight. My God, I told you that was bad right there. Glory to God. I got to say it again because I, I, that just makes me feel sweet in my spirit. Prior in the morning is the key that opens the door. That's why every morning you get up, the first thing you should do, open the door. Yeah? Start praying. Drop on your knees. Give the Lord thanks. And when you go to bed at night, pray again and shut the door. Now while you're sleeping in the night, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. He is watching over you and giving his angel charge over you. Amen? So God wants you to have peace. Yes, indeed. Huh? So these are part of the given. These are part of the given of our lives. Is peace. The absence of all conflict. Oh, oh God. There are times when even Jesus called us into conflict with the destructive force of life. But he gave us a peace while we are going through the conflict with the destructive force of life. Peace is really built on the promises of his presence. I don't think I can finish this tonight. Peace is really built upon the promises of God's presence. Are you hearing me, child of God? Not, I'm not talking about his omnipresence now. I'm talking about the manifest presence of God. Peace. Peace is really built on the manifest presence of God. The promise of the manifest presence of God. Jesus said, my peace is his peace. Is not your peace. The devil come to cause confusion. But God said, my peace. My peace. Glory to God. Jesus said, he leave with us. My peace, I leave. I give you my peace. I leave it with you. Peace is the presence of his spirit in our lives. You're not to have the Holy Spirit in your life and live a life of confusion and frustration and conflict. Amen. And have silent screams that nobody can hear. That is not your portion. That is not your inheritance. It's not a part of your DNA. It's not a part of the promise that God gives you. God said, I'm promising you something. I'm going to give you peace. And a promise is the coming of a not yet reality. But when you get the Holy Spirit, glory to God. Because the word of God is built upon the integrity of God. So therefore we can trust the word of God. We can rely on the word of God. We can depend on the word of God. Why? Number one, it is inspired. Number two, it is authentic. Number three, it is infallible. It does not change. Because God's word and God himself is the same. So if the God changes word, he changes himself. 
and then he would lie to us because he said, I am the Lord, I change not. <laughs> oh God, I might have to come back next week with this one here. This Psalm 23 series, I can't rush it like that. So the peace, amen, of the 23rd Psalm is built on that great promise. The Lord is my shepherd. Glory to God. Woo! My God. I wish if Priscilla would hear me tonight, she would have waved her hand at least back at me. Yeah! Glory to God. I wish if somebody out there tonight would wave back at me and say, Thank you, Jesus. Because the peace of Psalm 23, amen, is built on that great promise. The Lord is my shepherd. I want you to repeat it to yourself. The Lord is my shepherd. Say it until your spirit capture that revelation. The Lord is my shepherd. Glory to God. And that is one uh, th that is the one critical constant in changes of our lives. That the Lord is my shepherd. So the psalmist see God in control of his life. And you ought, God, you ought to see God in control of your life because God knows no limit. How many God that God knows no limit? And the Bible said he maketh me to lie down in green pasture. Sheep do not know their limits. Sheep do not know their limits. They will stay in the field all day, never resting. The shepherd makes them to lie down. Is the shepherd that makes them to lie down. So the principle of this passage is that God will never put in you more than you can bear. Glory to God. Oh, you just missed an opportunity right there to lift your hand and say, Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. He will never put on you more than you can bear because you are a sheep. You're not a goat. Ah, yes, I did say. Did I say that just now? Did I say that? You're not a sheep. You're not a goat. You're a sheep. Because a goat eats anything, everything. Goat is just run wild. But a sheep always have that peace, that calmness about them. Glory to God. Now, he lead me beside the still water. What a great statement of faith. What a great statement of faith. He leads me beside his still water. Amen. The sheep will not drink from a rushing current. No, sir. The sheep does not drink from a rushing current. Sheep does not drink from dirty water. Lord have mercy. And you have some doctrines of devils that you have people been, amen, drinking and taking in. Praise God. It's because you don't know that you're a sheep. So you allow them to infiltrate your spirit with all kinds of false doctrines and error. You've got to be careful whose tank you drink from, whose reservoir you drink from, whose river you drink from. Glory to God. So a sheep does not drink from rushing current because a sheep likes tranquility. They like a peaceful surrounding. They trust the shepherd to lead them to still water. Glory to God. Ah, I wish tonight if somebody would have drink. The Bible said, ah, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Glory to God. And he said, when you drink, you out of your belly shall flow what? Rivers. Not river, but rivers of living water. You've got to understand then. He say rivers because in Genesis chapter 2, amen, you have a river in the Garden of Eden with four heads. One river with four heads. Amen. Rivers of living water will flow out of the believers to the world. Glory to God. It was Ezekiel that God tell Ezekiel duh, to take the plumb line and step into the water and measure. Praise God. And when he measured, and the Bible said he stepped out 1,000 feet, the water was to his ankle. He said, measure again, man. It reached to his knees. He stepped out again. He said, measure again, man. It reached to his waist. Glory to God. He stepped out. He said, measure again. And the water rises in Ezekiel chapter 37, I believe, that he could not even cross over. He swam in that water. God is always positioning you for a greater flow of the Spirit of God in your life. Glory to God. He leadeth me beside still water. What a great statement of faith. Amen. Saints of God, you've got to hear me now. 
Prayer is going to the still water. Prayer is going to the still water. When you pray, God leading, God is leading you to the still water. What a great statement. Amen. A faith that is then. Because prayer is the most powerful force that God gives to a man in the earth. Is getting our bearing in a world where we are beckoned a thousand directions. Amen. The world is beckoning us in a thousand directions. It's pulling us, amen, in all directions. But thank God, prior is realizing again that God is in control. I cannot make emphasis on this enough, saints of God. God is in control. In the good times, in the bad times, in the highs, in the lows, God is in control. Glory to God. And God brings peace to our lives. Verse 3. My God, time is rushing. Verse 3. I'm going to see if we can finish this in 15 minutes or 10 minutes. Verse 3. Amen. Life of resilience. God will replenish my strength when I am empty. He restored my soul. Glory to God. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. That is Jehovah Rapha. Ah, Jehovah Rapha, he restored my soul. That means he is my healer. God is our strength. Oh my God. Oh Jesus. God is our strength. The psalmist David said, he restored my soul. Not restoring my spirit, but he restored my soul. Because my soul is, Im is immaterial. My soul and my spirit is immaterial. My soul is what connects me to the natural world. My soul has five components to it. My God. And the five components of my soul, amen, sometimes I get cast down. Sometimes I get sad. Sometimes I'm broken. Sometimes my soul is discouraged. Glory to God. Because of what I have to deal with and go through, I try not to be discouraged, but my soul is like a vacuum. It's drawing the natural things into my life that causes me to become discouraged. But David said in Psalm 23, verse 3, He restored my soul. In other words, He, God, gives me new strength. He, God, give me new strength. Praise God. How many glad that you draw strength from unseen resources. Praise God. So he is my resilience. Ah, a life of guidance. Now look at the life of guidance now in verse 3. Say this latter part. B. He leaded me in the part of what? Righteousness. Oh God tonight. Righteousness for his name's sake. For God will guide us when we are confused. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Notice now. The path of righteousness. Not a Jehovahistic name. The Lord is our Jehovah Tiskin you. The Lord is our righteousness. Indeed, our Lord Jesus has become our wisdom. He is our righteousness. He is our sanctification. He is our redemption. Oh my God, you've got to praise the Lord God forever. My God, the Lord leads us, praise God, in the path of righteousness. The path of right living, right wiseness. Glory to God. The Lord is our Jehovah tisking you. The Lord is our righteousness. Uh, a right standing with God. And indeed our Lord Jesus has become our wisdom. Not only our wisdom, but he is our righteousness. Not only our righteousness, he is my sanctification. And he is my redemption. Glory to God. I believe you should stop right there and just wave a hand and tell the Lord thank you. Because he is your wisdom. He is your righteousness. He is your sanctification. He is your redemption. Glory to God. My God. He giveth me, say he leadeth me, or guide me in the path of righteousness. Meaning that God is our sufficiency. 
God is our sufficiency. Saints of God, hear me now. God is our sufficiency. God's nature is to guide. God's nature is to guide. He is not a reluctant leader. He is not a reluctant shepherd. We are often reluctant to follow him, but his leadership is sufficient. Glory to God. My God from Zion. So I know that some of you are faced with a crisis right now. You may be faced with a disaster right now. You may face with a bad situation right now. But the Lord is my shepherd. And he is our sufficiency. Glory to God. I have to rush this. I'm so sad that I have to rush this. Praise God. Because all of us need a renewing power of life. Amen. Like David. Amen. That is something difficult to confess. But when we admit our weaknesses, God supplies his supernatural strength. Praise God. The little girl wasn't wrong when she said, The Lord is my shepherd. That's all I want. Glory to God. Woo! My God. My God. Where is Dana? The Lord is my shepherd. That's all I want. Glory to God. Because my God will supply. My God is able to do abundantly. Verse 4. The Lord is a life of confidence. The life of confidence. Verse 4. God will walk with us in dark, in our dark and fearful days. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. Glory to God. They comfort me. The Lord is my shepherd. All the promises hang on that. And now verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, glory to God, and that reveals his Jehovah, his name, the Lord uh, Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Shammah, our God who is there, our God who is with us. So even though we go through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have to fear no evil, for God is with us, Jehovah Shammah, glory to God. The Lord will shield us in the time of our dark valleys. Oh my God. Our moments in life when we face the shadow of death. David say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't have to fear no evil. Praise God. Saints of God, we need this kind of hope for the life that we are living in today. A life worth living for. Praise God. Because hope comes through the certainty of God's presence. As the hope comes through the certainty of God's presence. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Glory to God. Life of assurance. Life of assurance. I have two more. Life of assurance. Glory to God. And the assurance is that God will protect us when we feel insecure. Have you ever felt insecure, child of God? God will protect you. Amen. When you feel insecure, your rod and your staff. Who, my God, tonight. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I want you to know that hope also comes from the comfort of God's power. Hope comes from the comfort of God's power. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know, the ancient shepherds, they travel light. Amen. And in his belt, he carry a rod to defend the sheep from attack. And a staff to support and help guide the sheep. The psalmist say that his hope in a God who will guide and who will guard us through life. Glory to God. My God. Ah, number, last one, number five. Amen. One more after this. Life of influence. Glory to God. A life of influence. God will show his favor and his grace and your life. Believers, hear me. One of the benefits that is in Psalm 23, that they preach over the dead every time somebody is dead. Amen. 
and the psalm is not for dead people, it's for you. Here are the benefits and the blessings, the life of influence. God will show his favor and grace and your life. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. When my enemies comes around, the Holy Ghost start cooking. Lord have mercy. I said when my enemies comes around, the Holy Ghost start cooking. He start preparing a table in front of them that don't like me. That's why I don't pray for God to kill my enemy. I pray for God to keep my enemies. That when they come around, God starts spreading a table. He put a banquet before me. And the banquet that set before me. And a banner over my head, which is love. Are you hearing me here? Glory to God. So the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So prepare as a table before me in the presence of my enemy. All your enemies that is waiting for your demise. All the enemies that are waiting for you to fall down and drop dead. All your enemies that are waiting for you to backslide. Glory to God. When they come around, the Lord spread a table of blessing. A table of abundance. Glory to God. In front of your enemies that they themselves have to say it had to be God. I would never have a church in here tonight. Glory Glory to God. Is anybody out there? Is anybody in here that have enemies? We all have enemies. Glory to God. And some of them is waiting for you to fall over. Amen. But thank God. Thank God. Thank God tonight. He prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. The Lord is Jehovah Nissi. The Lord of Abana. Glory to God. The Lord will fight for you. Amen. He will fight for you. He will bless you in front of them that try to hurt you to do you harm. He said I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said lo I'm with you always even to the end of the age. Glory to God. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup running over. He talks about divine overflow. I said he's speaking about divine overflow. Glory to God. God works of preservation in our lives. Thou anoint my head with oil no matter how careful the sheep and the shepherds are sometimes they get bruised sometimes they get wounded along the way but thank God the good shepherd takes out the oil the oil of healing the healing oil the balm in Gilead and pour upon us that while we're going through the afflictions of life praise God the devil cannot destroy us and that's why the Bible said many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord deliver him out of them all. Thank God we have a good shepherd. Glory to God. Life of benevolence. Amen. Verse 6. Life of benevolence. Amen. God will be good to me and good to you no matter what happens. A life of benevolence. Living in the goodness of God. Some writer said his goodness is chasing after me. Glory to God. His goodness is chasing after me. Verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy. What shall it do Priscilla? Shall follow me. All the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Glory to God. How many glad that he is your Jehovah Rafi? How many glad he is Jehovah Rohi? The Lord, your eternal shepherd, who follows you every day of your life. I want to encourage the believers tonight. Amen. He is your shepherd. He is your good shepherd. He is responsible for you. He will protect you. He will supply your need. He will defend you. He will fight for you. He will secure you. He'll pick you up and carry you when you cannot carry yourself. He will lift you up. Is anybody out there that knows that God is a lifter up of the weak? Oh, Ramando Boshanda. 
I want everybody right now to clap your hands and give the Lord a praise for he is your shepherd. Come on, come on. That's your benefit. That's your blessing. I give it to you tonight. The blessings of Psalm 23. Glory to God. He is everything. He is my sustenance. He is my, he's, he's my balance. He is my assurance. He is everything to me. Somebody clap your hands right now and give the Lord a praise. I pray your spirit will capture the revelation tonight that enhance your life and make you a blessing to somebody else. Well, God is good tonight. My God, my God. Woo! I never knew I could finish it so fast. Glory to God, I was trying to find Kermit. I had to leave some things out because of the time limit that we have. But I know you got the message. I know you got the word tonight. The Lord is my shepherd. All the promises hangs and that. When you're going through hell, remember the Lord is my shepherd. When you're sick in your body, remember the Lord is your shepherd. Glory to God. And the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Well, God bless you tonight. Come on, lift your hand right where you are. Let's give the Lord a praise. Come on. Come on, let's your hand right where you are. Give the Lord a praise. Glory to God. Give the Lord a praise right now. Glory to God. Let's take it to the next level. We're going to pray for you right now. But let's give the Lord a praise in your house. Come on. He is your shepherd. My God, this morning when I got up, praise God, I decided in my mind to seek the mind of God. Say, Lord, what will you have me to say? And I'll come into my spirit. Give them the benefits and the blessings of Psalm 23. Amen. Because most time they do not appropriate these blessings in their life. Because they think it's for the dead. They think it's for God. them against spirit. Praise God. But now lift your hand. The Lord is your shepherd. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord God, because you're our personal shepherd of our lives. We thank you, Lord God, because you're the Lord, my shepherd. Lord, you're the Lord, our Jehovah Rohi. You have proven to us, O oh God, that you are our Jehovah Jari. You are our provider. Lord God, you have proven unto us that you are our Jehovah Shalom. You are our peace. Lord, we thank you tonight, God, because you did not stop there. You are our Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that he lets thee. Lord God, we thank you tonight, God, because you are Jehovah Tishken, you. You're the Lord of our righteousness. And oh God, tonight we thank you because oh God, you are Jehovah Shammah. You're the Lord that is always there. You're the God that is with us. Lord God, tonight we come before you giving you thanks and praise for the revelatory knowledge, oh God, of the benefits, oh God, and the benefits and the blessings of Psalm 23. Oh God, that we can see this chapter, this division, oh God, from a different light. 
from a different perspective and appreciate the blessings of God in our lives because you are our shepherd and all the promises of God are hang at this reality, this revelatory reality, O oh God, that the Lord is my shepherd. God, everything that we go in life, God, help us always to remember that you are our shepherd, O oh God, and you care for your sheep. O oh God, you are our supplier, our protector, our healer. O oh God, the defender of the righteous, the avenger of the avenger, the tormentor of the tormentor. O oh God, I thank you tonight, God, and everyone tonight, God, that is going through sickness and disease and affliction. Help them to remember, God, that you are their shepherd. And, O oh God, you care for the sheep. Lord God, just have David I draw a metaphor, O oh God, of dealing with natural sheep, Lord God. And we have received the revelation. Oh God, through the power of the Holy Ghost, that we are the sheep of your pasture. And oh God, we thank you tonight, God, because you're faithful to your sheep. You're faithful to your word. Oh God, you have committed yourself to the word. You have committed yourself to the sheep, the body of Christ. And oh God, tonight, those who are going through anxiety and depression, and those who are troubled in their mind, oh God, help them to recognize, oh God, that you bring peace unto them. That you have given them your peace. Your peace, Lord God, that passing away all understanding. Oh God, those in Jamaica that going through the storm. And those in Haiti, oh God, that going through the storm. Just experience an earthquake. And oh God, there are some tonight who are homeless. There are some tonight, oh God, who are perplexed in their mind. I pray, God, in the midst of it all, you can give them a peace that passes away all understanding. Lord, we thank you tonight. We bless your name tonight God in the name of Jesus we thank you for touching those who are sick we thank you for pouring the oil and the wine in their brokenness tonight to bring healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ I draw the bloodline of protection around every home every family every believer around your property around your children and your grandchildren I offer protection and security by the rich red supreme blood of Jesus Christ and I thank you Lord in Jesus name well God is good amen come on say amen clap your hand and say amen right where you are God is good thank you again for hearing the word of God I pray your spirit will capture the revelation of God's word and you will grow and enrich in your spirit well God bless you tonight grace and peace be unto you from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ and like I always say what good See you when I see you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Remember tomorrow night, amen, the eagles banquet. Amen, the eagles, where the eagles gather. Every Wednesday night, praise God, you check the stream, amen, the live stream, amen, uh, uh, Facebook, and you'll see, amen, the member ID, amen, or call somebody, and they will give it to you. Every Wednesday night, amen, sometimes 130, 150, Wednesday and Thursday, where the eagles gather. God bless you. You can't afford to miss tomorrow. God have a word for you. Grace and peace be unto you in Jesus' name. Walk good. Now you're in your house, but still, walk good. See you when I see you. God bless you.